Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Day the Hungry Gamer is back with another episode of Boards and Brews. And today I am rejoined after several episodes by my occasional regular co host, Don, one of the designers of Backyard Chickens. And for the first time ever, we have an interloper. We have a publisher who has joined us. And I'm checking my notes here, Peter, and I have yeah. most important man in board gaming history, Peter Vaughn of Cardboard Alchemy. Is I that, is that just, accurate? I, I think you got your yeah. notes wrong again, but that's okay. Yeah. I appreciate it anyway. Thank you. Honored to be here. The second most important. Got it. You heard it here. Peter Vaughn <laughs> says he's the second most important man in board gaming. And so before we jump in, you get hit with the rapid fire questions, Peter. Okay. Jeez. All right. uh -oh. Rapid fire questions. Oh, man. Who the crap are you? What is your shtick as a publisher? How and why did you get started making games? And what is your brewed beverage of choice tonight? Thank you. Hey, everybody. I'm Peter Vaughn from Cardboard Alchemy. I What does Cardboard Alchemy do? We we bloat games into ridiculous, deluxified versions of them. Uh, the best versions of them, frankly. But uh, I, I've been making games for a long time. I grew up on games, uh, Commodore 64 and then television. And then I started uh, wanting to make games until my friends told me to shut up and just start doing it. So I made iOS games and then uh, got bit by the Kickstarter bug because I thought, oh, I could actually raise funding and make board games, which I had been playing since I was a kid. I used to play a lot of games with my stepfather and he changed the rules to games. And so I learned that you could do that. You could actually just make games like Clue with a Lie, Stratego with movable bombs. So I thought that was fun. And uh, I wanted to make games ever since. My brewed beverage of choice tonight is a, uh, a cup of hot tea because uh, I have a potion dragon with me. And I thought boards and brews, we're going to make a nice cup of tea. This one is uh, Blackberry Sage. Pretty good stuff from uh, the Republic of Tea. And that's you officially are the person with the most props ever to come Thank on this you. show. <laughs> the most. And hold that potion dragon up. We, because, we, bloat, uh, we bloat everything to the fullest, right? And so, so as people who are actually watching, not listening, uh, can they get that dragon? Yes. This is available on the Cardboard Alchemy uh, site, cardboardalchemy.com. You can go to the UK and world shop or the US shop and get any one of four plush dragons. Yeah, if you're just listening, they're, they're super cute, everybody. They're super cute. <laughs> um, all right, Don, uh, what what is your brewed beverage tonight? I have our usual uh, traditional non-sponsor PSA. <laughs> Uh, the yeah, thanks, Fort light Point. and crisp Colt style ale from Fort Point, sorry, from Fort Point Brewing here in the Bay Area. It's very yeah. good. This this was the official nice. beer brand of the con. We had several flavors, but this is the go-to. Yep, that's the old standby. And I too just have some uh, iced tea. You know, it's Teacher Appreciation Week, which I didn't even realize. And a local mm -hmm. chicken joint is giving teachers a free meal. So I got this nice free meal, and with it a. Uh, Nice iced tea. So I have iced tea of the cold variety. Couldn't so tell you, you what it is. You left the con and immediately got uh, some chicken. Is that what you did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Wow. All right. So as as you can tell, everyone, we're talking about Don Con 3. Mm -hmm. And we're doing a quick recap, but we're going to try something a little bit different. And the reason we've allowed a publisher on our podcast. Amazing is because Peter is one of the three founders. And as we've established, the most important founder, even though he's not titular, <laughs> of Don Con. And so here we are. We're going to talk about what we thought of the con overall. We're going to talk about what the one upgrade each of us would bring would be. And probably a lot of nonsense we'll talk in there. Then we've decided to talk about the games we played, and we've broken it down into the best moment, the most the best surprise, your personal best loss, so a game that you lost, but still it was great. Your best win and your top game of the con. 
Ooh, top game of the con, yeah. But so let's just jump right in. Just general thoughts. How how did we think Don Con three went? Let's let uh, Mr. Titular Don himself start us off. <laughs> I I had a lot of fun. I enjoy planning it. Always it's always a, a challenge for us to find a weekend that works for everybody. But um, we managed to do it about once a year and. You know, it's fun to figure out the schedule. I, I was a little more organized this year about deciding what food we were eating when, and I think that went pretty well. I usually kind of figure out maybe two meals, and then we kind of throw the rest together. But um, so we had constant food, I think. And I don't know, just a great mix of games. You know, it's, it's good to have just all type. You know, we had short games, we had extremely long games and everything in between. So it was a lot of fun and just a lot of good humor. That's the yeah. best part. Yeah. Peter, what do you think? General thoughts. I had a great time at Duncan 3. It just seems to get, you know, more and more advanced as it goes. I mean, there were magnetic badges this year. Um, and, the, and official art this year. Like, yeah. Commissioned art. art. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it had, you know, the the nacho bar and the waffle bar in particular, just like off the hook. The, the, the stuff that's happening at Duncan is amazing. Frankly. And let's not forget, Don and I like an old fashioned, and Don had four different flavored syrups, <laughs> sugar syrups for the old fashioned. We had cinnamon, we had vanilla, we had the other one, and jaggery. Wait, what was <laughs> the, the other, other one? one? Honey, honey, that's what it honey, was. Yeah, honey, yeah, yeah. 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 It was pretty classic. I'm going to say that was to me one of the more fun moments it was just like hey don you want to drink yeah then just show up with something you never knew what it was going to be <laughs> come back have a good time and you know uh yeah. probably not do it i will i will say though i started hot this con my final ranking i i won five out of the 15 games i played in but i had like Four out of six or five out of seven for a while. I was feeling really good about myself early on, and <laughs> then the wheels fell off. All right, Don, your, your overall thoughts. Oh, you already did yours, didn't you? Went. Yeah. yeah. Everyone. Well, those, yeah, yeah. those syrups, by the way, made their way into, I mean, they were in old fashions, but they made their way into iced tea, diet, coke, oatmeal. Yeah, they went into a lot else. of things. Yeah. So we were having fun. Yeah, they, they, they were awesome. All right. So let's just kind of jump in here. What is the one upgrade that you would give? And I, I'll go first in case you guys need a moment to think. And I I hesitate to say this because this might hurt myself. Mm. But I think we either need more people or fewer people because we were constantly looking for this five or six person game. And that's limiting because of some of the games that like Peter brought that I know I really wanted to play, we couldn't do because of the numbers. Like Kootenai Horror, we couldn't play in the circus game. Yeah. And so I think we either need to add one or two people so we can have two, three, four player games going or give someone the boot, which might be me, <laughs> <laughs> which is the danger here uh, right. in order to if be able to do Don, some smaller games. If you're not named Don, you could be on the, the cutting block. So yeah, it's dangerous. I, I know, I know. But I, that that's what stuck out to me. Because when when I left, or when Peter left, I was like, we ain't going to play Kutna Hora. And I was all sad about it. Yeah. All right. What do you think, Don? What's your upgrade? I, I wonder if we need something more like an official schedule of games. I'm reluctant to do that, but we we did have those moments where it was just like, what are we going to play? We also didn't know precisely when some of the folks were going to be here, so it's hard to do that, to actually schedule it. I did scribble down more Dons, because you keep inviting <laughs> Secret Cabal Don, and um, he doesn't come out all the way from the East Coast. Well, uh, apparently, now that we know that Peter Vaughn that. takes private jets, maybe he all right. sent his. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that was a joke. I wrote down more Dons just because my ego is not big enough to carry the weight of a whole convention. But um, I don't know. I, I was struggling with this one. I like that we keep it loose, but an official schedule could be fun or a pre-planned pre schedule. We kind of come in with a rough list of games, but we well, did know, just maybe spend time scanning the shelves. If we, if we go that step to two tables going, there can be an yeah. official table and then the other one, how you choose who gets on the official table, I don't know. Yeah. So it sounds like I'm just I'm proposing and done or proposing more problems. 
is what we're proposing here. Yes. I, I'm going to help us out. I'm going to propose that the con was perfect. I mean, first of all, I got sent to the con via a private jet. I don't know any <laughs> other con that's willing to do that for a special guest, but I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, and for everyone who, who wonders what that is, I actually just booked a regular plane ticket that turned into JSX, something where I just went to a hangar. It was, it was great. And I, I, um, I'm going to always travel that way if I possibly can again, because that was that was amazing. They didn't quite have the uh, same hospitality as DonCon, but they were they were they had a good thing going. Um, I was going to go and say we needed more. You know, what I loved about DonCon in the beginning was we said, OK, we have a. We have a publisher, we have a designer, a content mm -hmm. creator, I'm trying to think of another person we need another category you know um this year we had sort of the badges had sort of different funny goofy stuff on it so i thought that i thought it was uh, fun um but i don't think we i don't know i don't think we need any other we had great times i can't think of an upgrade the food like i already mentioned the food was fantastic the we played i played personally 17 games and I, I really, I, we could have crammed in, I guess, a little bit more on Sunday, but it felt pretty good. The con was great. All right. Let's jump into the meat then as uh, <clears throat> Peter has refused to follow the brief. <laughs> All right. So we'll go with what was your best. Perfect. Well, Peter. I was going to say, I was going to say we had a publisher. We had a designer if only we had a content creator that's the person we should get for next time yes well, well because as we've already discussed idea. i put myself on the chopping block <laughs> so you need another one here all right so for what well, best moment they can try to pick a moment of the con that just tickled you the most or whatever however you want to define it don why don't you go first well i i was struggling with this one a little bit but i i love a good inside joke and I feel like we had a few, but one. So my son William was playing, <laughs> what were we playing? Merchant's Cove <laughs> on Friday night, and Will was playing the innkeeper. And every time it came around to Will's turn, he would look at his board and say, "What am I doing with my life?" And every time William would say, "Innkeeping." Yep. yep. Deadpan. Just, it was brilliant. It all it weekend. Was, and it lasted the whole con. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was just. Uh... It was going so poorly at my end. I mean, I'm pretty good at Merchant's Cove usually, and I just got waxed. It was embarrassing. I don't even know if I'm allowed back in the Meeple Boats. That's how bad it was. <laughs> All right, Peter. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, what you got? My number one uh, moment of the con is a moment involving Will, who can be... I mean, he could be in a game and he can needle you, you know, like I, I was playing some, you know, faction and he was just, just constantly giving me a hard time. Or he can, uh, you know, do a dance, sing a song. At this one moment in Dwellings, which has sound bases that uh, make all the monsters make sounds as they go on the table, oh, Will banged the table and one of the sound monsters went off and that put the light bulb straight above his head <laughs> to start bopping on the table to the song that was going at the time and then don filmed it if you want to go see it that's in the dwellings of Eldervale facebook group uh it was it was epic because as the as the banging was happening all the monsters were going off it was a really fun moment i forgot about that yeah that that, that was that was another that was my best play of that whole game too so, <laughs> <laughs> so all the moments are coming in my horrible defeats uh so the one for me was we were playing a collab and it's a new oh, game God. I got, and I hadn't heard of it, and we're, I was just having a good time playing. And uh, at one point, Peter was talking about how he's ah, gosh, I feel like I know this game. Gosh, why oh, didn't I back this game or something? I just went and I just looked because I was going to see how much money it raised. And right underneath it said, Peter Vaughn, backer. And I was like, Peter, you backed this game. He went, I did? And it was just, oh, oh man. I am notoriously was... bad at filling up pledge managers. And um, yeah, I didn't remember that I was in. I don't know how many I'm still waiting for. So every we, we've joked with Peter that he needs an assistant literally just to do his his pledges. 
He does. Yeah. And it, it just, oh, just, it was pure unmitigated shock across the table. I, I, I really, I, I mean, I remember it all of a sudden it came to me like, oh yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, absolutely. I do back a lot just because I'm supporting a lot of uh, publishers. And also if I lose a pledge by that whole let one go, I always just feel like, well, I, I, I donated money to a good cause and my shelf of shame is already big enough. So, you know, it's fine. It's all good. Yeah, they're, uh, uh, um, as, as we said, as the second most important man in board gaming, uh, a pledge from Peter Vaughn go, goes places. Like it gets out there. People are like, oh, what's Peter backing? Ooh. We try. I mean, I, you know, I, I want to support. Well, uh, you know, and actually that is, um, as when I've worked with some publishers on their outreach, I have reached out to some people and they're like, look, the shipping to this country, it's just, it's too much. I'm like, okay. I was like, well, can you throw in a dollar so everyone who follows you can see that you did that? Right. And it has, it makes a bump sometimes. It really can. Yeah. The entire thing rotates on the viral nature of, the, of it. You know, I will see that uh, Don back something and then I got to go check out, oh, what's Don going for here? And then I'll get yeah, luckily, in. Uh, Don and then uh, Matt, who came and played one day, and I we've gotten pretty good about not cross backing, yeah, and getting the same things. Like we we tried this thing called communication, and uh, it works would. okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good okay. deal. All right, let's jump into your biggest surprise. And so I'll go first on this one. To me, my biggest surprise was abduction. And this is a game about kidnapping ducks as an alien and getting them to swim in the right patterns and whatever. And I'd heard of this game, not because I knew anything about the game, but because they must be spending $17 million on ads because <laughs> I see them all the time. And my wife gets them all the time. And she doesn't do any board game social media stuff. And finally, she started asking. She's like, "This game looks kind of cute. I feel like I, I feel like I know this game, like because you keep seeing the ad everywhere. Like it's clearly <laughs> working." And then hmm. Don has it, and so we played it. And it's I important just, to just, you know, get you know things to pop up places so that people keep seeing them. You know what I mean? It's very subtle, <laughs> very subtle. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I just assumed because I, I, no one I know had ever talked about it. I've never heard of it never seen it i was like this cannot be good it just can't because i'm a snob no. and i was like it's a neat looking thing the ducks are cute and i'll be damned if that was not a fun little game i it's been it's been living in my head and so i i have a copy coming um nice. because i think my wife's gonna love it so the ad was super right and the algorithm was super right for her but mm -hmm. yeah i was so surprised by how much fun i had with that 15 minute game so that's me nice any thoughts on the game or you just want to move on? No, I think uh, that was a sort of a, an immediate component love out of the whole table going like, wow, they've got this ship that you reach into, uh, you know. Um, flying saucer. It's a flying saucer, but I'm trying to think of what it's made out of. It's a, it's, it's a component um, like a... It's rubbery. It's a rubbery plastic, right? Or, rubber. um, yeah. Yeah. It, it almost feels like those uh, uh, rubber trivets that you might get. Right. So, mm -hmm. so silicone. So it, it, you're it getting is. all the ducks and you have to reach in to get your ducks out. You're pulling a random, uh, set. but the ducks are also colorful and cute and the cards are immediately appealing with the art. So I think, yeah, it had an, it had an impression right away. So, and it, it played in 15 minutes. So like yeah. it just yeah. nailing on the, the suits. Those, those ducks are cute. I mean, man, yeah, it's one of those cool. games I'm dying to take to work and, you know, play with my team at lunchtime. And, you know, those light, easy to teach games are great. And it's just got such good table presence. It's funny. I I had never seen an ad for it. And somebody taught it to me at Dice Tower West this year. And I hmm. immediately bought it because it's great. So I had kind of the reverse story. Like I bought it because somebody taught me, which is, you know, the right way to buy games, I guess. But um, yeah, I, I actually have seen like 10 ads just over this last weekend, I guess, because we were talking about it. In the <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah, I w did not have the deluge of ads. I don't know how that happened, but um, I'm glad I discovered it. Well, I definitely did. I've seen ads for that thing for a long time. Uh, <laughs> and I always, and we work with Lucky Duck Games a lot at Carbon Alchemy. And so 
I always think about what they think about it. I just, it just crosses my my brain like, oh, there's a duck sure. thing in a duck company. Is that them? No, that's not them. All right, who wants to go next with their surprise? John, you got one? Uh, my, yeah, mine's quick. I just, let's go to Japan surprised me. Hmm. And, and I think just as Peter was teaching it, my attention was span was just like gone. And I don't know what was going on in my head, but I was just struggling to 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 follow it. And about 10 minutes into the game, I started feeling clever. And so mm. it surprised me because I was getting grumpy just because I could not grok it during the teach. And I, I, I don't like that feeling. And it'll sometimes ruin a whole game for me. And it was not a bad teach, Peter. I'm not saying that. But just my <laughs> brain was No, he's saying else. it was a terrible, it wasn't terrible teach. Um, but it's a clever little game. It's a neat little puzzle you're figuring out. And it probably took me half the game to really know what I was doing. But by the end of that game, I was surprisingly having a good time for where I was at the beginning. And it's just like, oh, cool. I had a couple of games that I struggled with this weekend just because my brain was in the wrong place. But um, yeah, that one surprised me and how well it turned out. I didn't win, but uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, You know what? That that was the very close number two on my surprise. Because I was like, I don't, let's go with Japan. I'm like, eh, whatever, I don't care. Stupid. But... <laughs> Also, then, I love a game with an unnecessary exclamation point in the middle of the title. Yeah, had I realized it's that, let's go more... exclamation point to Japan. Oh wow! I, 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 I would have been more that. excited had I realized that. But even while Peter Peter was teaching it, I was like, "Oh, son of a bitch! I think I like this." <laughs> <laughs> like I was very indignant that I thought I was going to like it, and I did. That was a cool game. That was a cool game. Well, uh, Josh Wood, the designer, will be pleased to hear that. I backed. He's a uh, he's a good friend in LA. He's uh, doing playtests here works with AEG and uh yeah all because he was meant to go during the pandemic but didn't happen and then had all this research and decided to make a game about it it's a pretty neat uh tableau builder and I just played it once so that's why the teach was a little rough um but uh, yeah I liked it too yeah, so I'm I glad that worked out that. I know you didn't <laughs> say that but I'm just saying I I actually feel bad when I you didn't say it, Don, but we all heard it. So when I okay. don't, I, I love when I'm more a little more comfortable with the game because then I can just, just immediately get into the, the right sure. theme and the right pacing and the right moments and stuff like that instead of, wait, let me go look this rule up. Um, so that's good. Glad that worked out. My surprise, uh, my surprise might be Buru, I think, because I... It, it was one of the ones I was considering backing, and I don't know why I didn't get it on that because it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And I yes. think I had this moment of maybe it's gorgeous and there's no game in there. I don't know what I was why I didn't go. Or at the time, I think also I was prepping a campaign. That might have been it. I think I might have been prepping Flamecraft. I think that was around uh, Flamecraft, I believe. Yeah. So I might have been too busy to get in. But um, that game had all all the things for me. So... It had the great art, which of course is gorgeous, but it also had amazing gameplay that you didn't have to kind of guess what each move was. You, as soon as Will taught a section of that board, I knew all the actions and I didn't have to ask later, what is that? Wait, what happens here? I didn't have that problem. And then so you think, okay, then maybe it's too light, but no, it had this depth of like, every choice was interesting. And then finally it had component, component bling which is one of the things I, I want to do at Carbon Alchemy. I mean, there was ridiculous pieces, which I was very happy to see. Um, so yeah, it had all the things. And yeah, I, I, I got to go get that game now. So Yeah, it's it's a good game. And I was really glad that we all had a good experience because those of you who watched the Dundracon video know that we, we had a not good experience of a good mm. game. And so that, that, that was a pretty darn delightful. So, yeah, I think I can immediately see a lot of people in my group liking it because of the, um, I think once you've got a group that's trying to outthink and bid each other, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's even better. And we played at five and it was, it might've been 90 minutes with teaching. Yeah. Yeah. It's at, snappy. At five. yeah. yeah. Really good. All right. So uh, moving into, oh, I'm excited for this one to hear what you guys say. So we're going to move into the best loss. What was the game mm. that you lost? But damn, you felt so good about that loss. And Don, we're gonna let you go first on this one. I'm gonna go with Star Trek Ascendancy. Hmm. So th this is a game that I adore, um, and we played it a couple of times here locally. It's a commitment. 
you know, this is a game, you know, the base game is three players only, but you can add factions and it says the base, it's a, it's an hour per player for <laughs> experienced players. I love that, that phrase in the rule book. So it's like expect mm. it to go longer if you, if you're not experienced. So after your first, after several games, it'll be an hour per player. No, nobody at the table had played several games uh, and several were brand new, but um it's just it's a fun game it takes a minute to get into it and then once you do like every turn is a conversation turns can be long in the game but i don't feel like it's the kind of game where you're wandering off or staring at your phone while somebody else is taking their turn it's engaging mm -hmm. uh, i was playing the Ferengi this time uh for the first time and they are all about you know making deals with other people and just building up a ton of production, like production is a resource in the game. And you want to get a lot of that because the Frankie can use it to, to spin on other things. And I don't know, I, the reason it's my favorite loss is I felt like I was playing that character, right. Mm -hmm. And my one mistake was, you know, a few hours into the game, I just said, okay, I'm getting 19 production and everybody at the table was like, what? And I could have just gotten yeah. it and said nothing. Yep, but then the entire table turns against me, and that's why. Except I lost. for me, okay, I never attacked you. The <laughs> well, Ferengi the Cardassian the alliance remained strong at the end that's of the game. That's an interesting point, Don. That had you not said that, yeah, it, it might have been. It was just speaking out loud in the middle of a very crowded, uh, mm -hmm. you know, restaurant. Yeah. And it's you know that's dangerous because the last time we played four player, Chris Stone was playing the Federation, and he did that too. And we had to stomp them down. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah it, it 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 was funny, and it was one of those things like you you said something, and you were the guy that peaked, like an hour or two early. Like it was like, hold up, this game's we got to have this game go thirteen hours. We better stop Don now. <laughs> um, yeah, that one came in. That that was a close second for me yeah. on best loss. The the reason that it's second for me on best loss is. It started so horribly for me. I was like, well, I'm out of this nonsense. Like, yeah. and then it just over time, you guys are beating up on each other. And I had two chances at the end to pull the win if everything went right. It, everything didn't go perfectly, but that was a close second. That that as far as losing a game, I did have fun losing that one. What, what were your thoughts on that one, Peter? That would actually could have been my best loss as well, because I won that game and then came in third. I mean, I won that's, that's the true. game first, but yeah, then... that's right. So yes, uh, so there's a, Peter won with the, he got the five ascendancy, and then I took it from him by getting the five ascendancy and seven Lowering. systems to his five yeah. systems, and then Matt won right after getting to five ascendancy and seven systems and knocking me down to six. So that that yeah. that was a that was a good loss all that was around. A good loss. And this all happened in the same round, just in case anybody's having trouble tracking how three people won in sequence. It's just like you yeah. check victory at the end of the get at the end of the round. So yep. So yeah. Peter won three people on the third turn of round three. I won on the fourth turn of round three, and Matt won on the fifth turn of round three, or of, of round whatever forty. So my yeah. best loss was getting fourth place out of five players. So yeah, pretty great game. It's a good loss. Yeah. All right, Peter. What, what was and your I, Oh, go ahead, I had man. the chance to, sorry, I had the chance to do something. And if I had gotten perfect dice rolls like 17 times in a row, I would have taken the game. And I loved having that little chance. And then I had horrible dice rows. Yeah, that is the fun. Just, I think that's one thing that's really fun about it because with that when I had my, you know, quote, secret Cardassian base that nobody knew about, and mm -hmm. I popped up next to the, next to Andor, if everything had gone perfect, the game was over. Like that yeah. was it because I yeah. I obliterated the Romulans because like they left their back door open. What a bunch of suckers! And then, yeah. but if it, everything was perfect, whatever. Like I feel like the game is swingy enough that you feel like, well, maybe. But yeah, maybe if the more. if the Romulans are watching, I loved when I said to the Romulans, "You sure your main planet is guarded, right? It's covered so that someone can't just come in there." And then I look over, and there's one ship. <laughs> over there and i was like come on i have to go fly over there to protect it i couldn't at the time do that so yeah, yeah. all right so um <laughs> peter what's your your best loss my best loss i did remember so a couple of the games were super close right so it was like oh one point or i could have done one move there and had it i could have had it and one of those games 
just happens to be one of my favorite games because I developed it, is Dwellings of Eldervale. And I will say it never disappoints at Doncon. It hasn't disappointed in any scene that I've played it. I This is one of the reasons I fell in love with it from Luke Laurie. Um, it just has that energy. And we were playing five player. I feel really good about five player because five player will wreck you. It'll destroy mm. you. It'll chew you up. You'll be wanting to do something and they will just go sideways and you have to be okay with that. I was having kind of a great game. I was pretty set up for what I thought was that win. Um, but as can happen, someone else is like, I don't see the thing I want. So I'm going to walk right through you. And if you don't like those kind of things happening to this, you know, battles with a sudden dragon or someone's warrior landing where you are, uh, I was pretty set up to do my final dwelling. I had it all set. I I was going to be in a realm that I cared about, and and then literally the you know just with no care, uh, some you know someone comes in and says, "Hey, I'm going to take that." You know, we'll egg Devon too. So you know, well, I mean, it was clear that you were going to win. I know mean, like, it wasn't. I was like, hey, look, if if he gets that dwelling out, like I it have- was a. No it was chance. a one-two punch, though. I didn't get the dwelling I wanted. And then Will triggers the end of the game at my... So I had like a weak moment where I had no <laughs> units. And I said, well, there goes anything I can do on the final turn, which is just that's the way that game goes. There is definitely a timing to the ending. You got to see it. I did not see he could do that. And I was like, oh, I hope my prophecies are enough to get that score. And it was, I believe, two points away. Yeah, it was Something pretty. Like pretty points away. It was a. It was, it was a, a good win for Don. And you know, and I, I, you should feel better because that did not go how I thought it was going to go. <laughs> like you know, I was like, I don't think I'm going to win, but I think I might be up in second here. I was in fourth <laughs> by a lot. <laughs> like, just wasn't even close. Dwellings is always a good time, so it is my mm-hmm. best loss or win. I mean, whatever happens to me in that game, I'm still happy. I played Dwellings. So. So I was, like I said, I was thinking about Star Trek really hard, but I didn't pick that because I, at no point did I actually think I was going to win because it just, I was like, my joke was, oh, I didn't know you spelled irrelevant. C-A-R-D-A-S. It like, it's just like, what am I doing over here? Like there was turns when I had eight command points and I used three. because That's all I could do. I was like, this is over. So I'm going to go with the one that I actually thought I had. Hmm. And then I lost at the end. That was Avant Card. We played that the first night. And this is a cool little game that Don Don found. And the first time we played it, we weren't sure if we were just tired and maybe a little drunk or if it was actually good because it was super late. Then Don drove home and I was like, Don's probably dead now because he left at like three and you know, three thirty in the morning. Yeah, but so we played it again. You survived, Don. Yeah, well, all of us are. Because we would have lost Avant Card. I mean, that would have been terrible. <laughs> wow. But so it's a cool little game and Peter is all about it the way it's built. Mm-hmm. But it's just this fast, quick, quick little game. And as I was going through, I was like, oh, I think I see the winning strategy. I think I see it. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to ruin it. And I didn't because I lost. But I th- I, I believe I lost tie- on tiebreaker. I believe. I might be mm. m- totally misremembering. But it was close. So. Yeah, it, it was just... Yeah. I I love losing on a tie or, you know, mm-hmm. I just find that so exciting. It's like, Oh, they're Oh man, I didn't have enough twos or like whatever the nonsense is. Oh, if I ever lose on a tie, no matter what the tie breaking conditions are, I consider that a win in my, did I win that game? I, I, I you know, I, I'll still grant it to the person who actually got it, but I will think, yeah, I took that. I took that game. Oh, mm-hmm. so that's good. You can lie to yourself. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that 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 was that was mine. Uh, in, in, any thoughts on on Avant Card before we move on? Yeah, I, I love it. it. It's a game I wasn't aware was coming until I heard Mary Flanagan, one of the designers, on a podcast, and I think that was about the time the campaign was up. And I don't remember what podcast it was, but I went and looked at it, and I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. I backed it. It's not an expensive game. Um, I love the little extra bits that came with the Kickstarter, but I, I think the base game is brilliant and. It's got a great, you know, toy factor to it. Um, not toy factor, but just there's a gimmick to how it's all put together. It all rolls out and sets itself up. It's great. Um, but 
I'm really glad to have discovered I was teaching it to anybody who would let me at Dice Tower West this year and several people went and then bought it immediately at the the vendor that had it there. So it's great. I like it. It's worth checking out. Sorry, Peter, go ahead. I'm going to save my thoughts on it to another category because <laughs> I have some other things to say about it. All right. Well, <laughs> ju- well, then jumping right in to best win. What was the win that you felt the best about? I'll jump and go first. And it's it is mm-hmm. easy. Castles of freaking Burgundy. Oh man, that was another one. I was close. Well, Don <laughs> yeah. and I were both close. We Scott have was played close. this game with a uh, less with Peter, but at least Don and I have played this game on BGA thirty times. Right, I don't least. know. And at Dundercon, we played in person with uh, Skippy and Don, and that's when I learned I didn't actually know how to play uh, all kinds of rules. Things I was like, what? But so I've played a few more times, and I've gotten better at castles of burgundy i've still never won until don con three nice. i saw i had the vineyard and i was like i am all that is grape <laughs> and i went for it I and i got depressed vineyard. because we scored the vineyards last and i was like and you guys all shot ahead of me i was like oh man i lost again but i pulled it up i like got a 20 points or something and oh that so was satisfying a to finally win. I'm one for 50 now. <laughs> Nicely done. Proud of you. That was a great victory, man. Yeah. In the uh I thought the grapes you're going too hard on that. Well, so the I I'm a person of extremes. <laughs> and mm. the first time we played it, I barely touched it. And I was like, mm-hmm. ah, terrible choice. And this time I was like, I wouldn't, I was like, well, I'm gonna lose anyway. So let's see what happens if I go real hard on the grapes. Yeah. Um, and, and it worked out, which is kind of what was satisfying because mm-hmm. it was one of those things like, I think this is a stupid choice. I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, yeah. it worked. <laughs> well, those are fun. Yeah. For, for anybody not familiar, this we were playing fancy Castles of Burgundy, the new edition, and the, the Vineyard expansion is the new one that they, came, mm-hmm. I assume, Steppenfeld came up with for this version. We played with almost every other expansion too. So. That made for a fun game. <clears throat> I highly approved of the deluxification of this game. Yep, oh, it's brilliant. And, and it, was, it was satisfying for everybody that uh, one of the things that helped me win was I purchased an inn, which does nothing except it's an inn. And so I got mm-hmm. to innkeep in Burgundy too. Yeah. Was, yeah. Very on brand. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who's taking next? Best win. So my best win is uh, I actually brought a Devere game, uh, which was Three Ring Circus that we didn't get uh too but i had heard about white castle and uh there was this last minute i i think uh don's son adrian was like i'm going to bed but then there was this like wow well, or i could stay up and teach white castle um and that suddenly happened and it was a game that i wanted to check out and grant mm-hmm. lyon had told me it was great i'd heard it from other people it was great um so i'm the person at the table getting a brand new teach everyone else has played um i soaked that teach up and i ran that thing i went i went hard on a i just saw a strategy i clicked with that game and i will say this i think i am one for 50 against adrian but i took that win that felt really good because it was and i thought i was all oh, way ahead it's like a tortoise and hare thing i'm like oh man i got my castle in the bag but then it became down to this like two points and i and i grabbed it i had such a fun time that, that game was uh everything i wanted it to be like good amount of time it doesn't overstay its welcome in fact it's a very fast very oh, fast yes. moving game you have to quickly see what is going on really great choices um different strategies people were doing different things to try and get the win and i thought that was clever so yeah i love that game yeah will you haven't played that one yet right no and it's so i i I went home because i knew we had the super early yeah day the next day and i was i was already tired and i mean it was a great choice like i got home and i was asleep within like nine minutes (laughs) um but had i known that White Castle was going to be played, I probably would have stayed. Oh, no. Yeah, because I, I, I haven't played it, and I keep yeah. hearing about it. So just everyone seems to love it. Um, it. It was all the rage for a little bit, but... Yeah. 
some other time. There yeah. will be other times based on my experience trying that game that I don't think, yeah, it's easy to play yeah, that one again. Corbin, Adrian's partner, is obsessed with it, Will. So anytime you come over, it can get to the table. Got it. Guaranteed. So, yeah, and, and, I, and Adrian I just, is, is yeah. a whiz at teaching it too. So, just yeah. to say also, Corbin and Adrian win a lot of games. And, and so, and then I was again, and then Don was making great moves right before me. So I felt like I was just in this gauntlet and I didn't know the game. And so I felt really cool to come out on top. That was fun. All right, Don, what's yours? I won dwellings. So obviously it's dwellings. Uh, it, everything Peter said about it, that game never disappoints. Every combat, you know, is a stand up event. You know, it's, Big surprises, people shouting at the table. I do not understand the people who say who who poo-poo the combat. I just don't get it. <laughs> every time I play that game, there are people standing up during the fights because it's just exciting. Uh so I, I don't know. It's a great game. It's one where I felt like I was playing it right, even though there were a couple of times where I did stupid things like I spent a resource that I meant to save for the 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 end of my turn and um beaten myself up there were a couple of those things where i was really mad at myself because i screwed something up i think third of the way through the game i realized i had forgotten one of my factions powers and i just hadn't been using it oh yeah that changed ogres. things but but it went well um i kind of had things i wanted to do and i got them done and you know it was a very satisfying win and it's you know even better that it was so so close that's actually one of my favorite things about when I've heard other people, they have like a bad start and they start to get kind of down on their, oh, this game. Um, Dwellings is actually never, you're never written off. I don't think you're written off in any Agreed. kind of way. So I, when people realize that, that they can come back in and just take it, that's so great too. Yeah. You know, I think that's the biggest yeah. mistake that people make in a lot of these big games. Like same, like, in, well, Ascendancy again. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I came back. Like You could have had can. it. You yeah. just got to, Simmer down. <laughs> Stop the whatever's wailing on your nads. Stop it. Mm -hmm. And then figure yourself out. And you know, Don, I'm with you. Any day I win dwellings, that's a that's a day, man. That's very so sad. Badass. Especially in five players. Yeah, five like, players. That can bro. go anywhere. But it was great. It was fantastic. I love that yeah. game. Nice. Yeah. That was a good win. All right, Don. Let's let you take it right back. And this is, I think, this this is a hard one. What was your mm -hmm. top game of the con? Now, for everyone watching, I'm prefacing this by saying, this is not necessarily mean that we're like, this is the absolute best game, but it was the best experience. You enjoyed it the most, mm -hmm. the best, the top game of the con. So, you know, we don't have to feel, Peter doesn't feel like he has to say, has to say dwellings no matter what. <laughs> now, so, so Ascendancy was close here. Um, we played Federation, the three of us, which is a newish game um, that I also learned at Dice Tower West and immediately bought. Um, that was a really satisfying experience because that game can be hard to teach, I think, and I think I did it okay, and we all enjoyed it. Um, but I got to go with Dwellings. Like that was just, hmm. it's just such a great, you know, late in the evening kind of game, and we had a lot of fun. And you know, it's not that often we get fitted at full player count and you know, playing with one of the creators is always great. So oh, that's, that, that's my game of the con. I'm going to send you that money later for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to let, let uh, our, our, our special guest go, go last here with the final word. So oh, I'm, wow. uh -oh. I'm going to go with, for me, it was Buru. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I've liked okay. that game. I mean, I backed it. I was so, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I like this. I want to play it. Cause I'd actually gotten yeah. to play it on uh, tabletop simulator a few times. And it just, with the exception of our bad experience we had at the one con, and even then, it was in my top 10 games of the con. I think it's that good. I think that game, it just, as Peter said, it's beautiful, but it just does everything it's trying to do, and it does it well, and there's nothing wasted, and mm -hmm. it plays quickly, and you know, you never really know how it's going to go at the end, and it has one of those things I really love in games. I love in games... It's one of the reasons I like uh, Coloma as well. The I know what you need, but you know I know what you need, and I know you know I know, and you start doing that nonsense in your head of, mm -hmm. you know, well, how smart is Peter being? Or is Peter going to play dumb because he knows I want to play smart? And I, I 
I love that kind of thinking that's going on that doesn't even take a long time because it's not like there's variables. It's are they being smart or dumb right now? Which I just, mm -hmm. I, I, I love it. So <clears throat> guru for uh, me, top of the con. Awesome. That's cool. I mean, I, I agree. It's funny that you say that, that whole, you know, getting some sides ahead. Um, Peter Hayward, the one of the designers of Critic Kitchen, told me that there's a Japanese word for that called yomi, which is just the whole process of the mind game of getting someone's head and outplaying them. So that's a fun part of, uh, I think he calls that above the table. There's like on the table and above the table. The above the table stuff is fantastic. You know, some, you know, if you're into that, I mean, I like a good mix where I want to play the, the game as well. Mm. Brew has both. So, yeah. All right, and so the the last <clears throat> moment, Oof. the Peter Vaughn cardboard alchemy game of the con. Game of the con is a tough pick. Um, I like some of the ones that are mentioned because I would have put. You know, we had great times the whole the whole con. Burgundy was a fantastic. We didn't mention this, but there was double Burgundy happening at the same right. time. There's two games That's of right. Castle Burgundy simultaneous. One deluxified, one not, and, and also the the, the non deluxified <laughs> was with all of the kids sitting on the floor at a tiny table. With <laughs> I the just really version. felt uh, there's a there was a there's a funny vibe to the whole thing. <laughs> we were up in the castle, you know, playing. Um, but anyway, I had fun doing that. I had fun in dwellings. Obviously, we talked about that. Uh, just a, another shout out to Federation, right? That was a that was a really great teach, Don, and I thought that game. Uh, that's probably one I'm picking up for sure. Um, didn't think a game about sci-fi council seat selection. I mean, it just had, there were fun things to do to go get a council seat. Anyway, it was just a lot of no fun. No one watches Star Wars was like, I want to be Padme. <laughs> right. Like, you know? Yeah. Um, but it had that, uh, you know, it wasn't just like, uh, it was like, hey, go to the Orange Planet, do, do fun exploration, and then do you want to advance orange to possibly score at the end or do you not want to do that? You know, uh, anyway, that was a lot of fun, but I am going to give it to already mentioned avant card. Um, oh, wow. uh, yeah, I know it's a very slight game for me to give the game of the con to, but here's the thing. It surprised the heck out of me. It, it had a very tight, package it knew what it was doing it was a tuck box that rolls out the cards it was a very smart game the way you would say that red seven or love letter is a smart game yeah, guys you don't understand like peter was like a cartoon with like the hearts like shooting <laughs> out of his eyes when don unrolled this thing as a publisher you always think about how to you know do the best with uh you know that we're at cardboard alchemy we're trying to think about how to do the best job with cardboard with wood with metal with you know uh, acrylics and so forth and and to see the i always love when say here's another example charterstone used tuck boxes that you write on i love mm -hmm. to see like when someone takes a, a basic thing like a tuck box you see with them you know magic the gathering or all the times we've played with a tuck box you just open and, and toss it or whatever you do with it this was a tuck box that had the cards packed like a, uh, I don't know, like a jelly roll and a set. Like it was a whole thing where you just like yeah. un undo the the whole thing in layers and watch the cards go lay out. Then it was functional because it stayed that way with rules on it or with the way the cards were on it. And then it packed that way. So brilliant yeah. packaging, yeah. a smart game, a fun game. And to me, I think it's my next one that I could travel around and do what Don just did to me, which is teach it and i have to instantly go to get it because that's what it, you were talking about that that's what that game is i i think i'm doing a commission on like six copies at dice tower west <laughs> and i and uh it, yeah it was a really good moment of the con too because uh this is the first time i decided to come in a little early and it was a uh, you know the first day is always a little rough travel wise and everything else like that it was a pleasant yeah. surprise like a really quick ender to a, a game night i think it's actually a perfect you know kind of a thing to do starter or ender so, yeah, so it was your work. first game and everything was downhill from there <laughs> <laughs> well it was second right we did play uh i came right into to merchant code because will had set up my turn that's right. oh that's right yeah and i've played you know that one before and i had not tried the so just to talk about that one for a quick 
Time Travelers, I've not tried it out, but Will had set up the perfect board for me. And that could have been considered my best win because I did take that one down. But because Will had set up the thing, I didn't really think that was fair. That was like, you know, my turn was basically handed to me. That was a great, mm. great, great thing. You're welcome. Uh, you can send me some money too. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I, before we, we we send you off, we're going to saddle you with what I always saddled Don with. And Don's always like, oh gosh, but we're going to saddle you with it this time, Peter. Oh, God. Before we let you go, what are your gaming words of wisdom? Hmm. Gaming words of wisdom. Wow, that is a, uh, there's a lot of great tips out there. Um, the, you know, the, these days, it's super easy to, online to um, to get mad at each other. And at the gaming table, I think it's great if you just be good good to the other people, right? You're, you're, this is a quality quality time thing where you get to turn off cell phones and hang out um the worst case is when a board game can turn into quibbles and arguments and stuff like that about rules it doesn't really matter it's not the win uh mm -hmm. to me the games almost didn't matter at Duncan. it was the people that i'm playing with so be good to the fellow gamers you have out there all right and so last thing how can they how can the people the good people find <laughs> out how to get all the cardboard alchemy stuff. How are they going to find out how to get the new thing? There's two games that are being printed at the moment. How do they get those games? What's coming next? You got like two minutes to tell us everything you need to tell us. Sure. Cardboard alchemy has, you know, we got a hub on discord and Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. We're all over the place, but if you go to cardboardalchemy.com, we do have all of our projects there and we have a place to get on our newsletter. Our newsletter comes out and tells you everything, including, as Will said, we are delivering Andromeda's Edge and Critter Kitchen. And there's going to be links there because you can still late pledge for Critter Kitchen and get that deluxified version I'm talking about, the one that's super blinged out with all the modes and stuff. And yeah, I yeah. hear the tiles the are made of rare colors. earth metals. <laughs> yeah. We're going to upgrade uh, further and further. I don't know what's going to happen when we get to a Kickstarter that we have to cram, uh, you know, something new that hasn't been done that's not shippable. I don't know. But at this moment in 2024, we're releasing two games this year. Andromeda's Edge is expected to have its debut party at Essen. And Critter Kitchen is uh, hopefully expected to have its debut party at PAX U. So. All right. Yeah. So uh, the day everybody, uh, you'll find uh, the link to Cardboard Alchemy and also their Discord down in the description of both the podcast and the YouTube video. Uh, Don, as always, thank you for well being the Don that we need, literally, <laughs> and uh, coming back on again. Everybody else, oh, there it is, Potion Dragon. <laughs> just one more time, just just hold it up, just put it on your right? shoulder. You know, let's just just like let's just be honest. This is what you want to see. Yeah, that, that's all. That's all we're here for. That's why we actually talk to Peter is for <laughs> dragons. Um, but. Um, uh, check all of that out as always if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe share maybe become a channel member as always thank you so much for watching have a wonderful wonderful day say goodbye Peter bye <laughs>